<clears throat> Welcome to the woolly world of wildlife. Today's chapter, sexuality. Did you bring your hand towel? Good. Our first specimen is the barnacle. The female has pockets on her body, and in each of these pockets she keeps a husband. In human terms, these husbands are one inch tall with eight inch penises. We have no idea how each husband knows when it's his turn, but they know. Each female has anywhere from two to 14 husbands. How many husbands are too many? Don't ask a barnacle. On the other end of the spectrum, a queen fire ant has sex just once, and from that encounter makes 2.6 million babies. In college tuition terms, that's a lot. Back at the other end of the speculum, uh, I mean spectrum, <clears throat> the lioness takes choosiness to a new extreme. For each pregnancy, she mates thousands of times. Why would she have sex thousands of times when she only needs to do so once? Cosmopolitan wants to know. Stick insects are the duration dynamos of the animal kingdom. When they get their groove on, it lasts A, 79 minutes, B, 79 hours, C, 79 days. The answer is days, and you thought you needed lube. The no-nonsense male dunnock bird, on the other hand, is in and out in one-tenth of a second. Isn't it nice to know you can now disparage your male with condescension and class? Why, you're my own sweet dunnock bird, aren't you, honey? Uh, okay. The most premature ejaculation-proof creature is undoubtedly the squid. One squid arm has evolved into a fake, permanently erect penis. In order to inseminate, the male must scoop a semen bag out of their body and insert it with the fake penis. Think of the contraception ramifications. There is no evidence that humans are evolving in that direction, but we can dream. Speaking of dreams, nature's ultimate power feminist, the hyena. Mm, the hyena clitoris has evolved to become a mock penis, larger than actual hyena penises. She urinates with this clit penis, copulates, and gives birth through it. Because it's so hard for a male to get up in there, females control all sexual relations. Males don't fight each other. They compete to see who can be nicest to the females. The only downside is that the clit penis is ripped apart during childbirth. But usually the injury, injury heals. In hyena society, even a baby female is dominant over all males. I guess we finally know which hyenas are doing all that laughing. Speaking of penises, the marine flatworm has dozens. And you thought you think about sex a lot. Moving on to the realm of the nasty, the male xylochorus bug is a serial rapist. But not in the way you're thinking. He rapes other males so that his sperm joins theirs the next time the rape victim copulates. There's a mother-in-law joke in there somewhere, but I'm too classy to make it. Not to be outdone, the male thrip punctures a female's body with his penis in order to inseminate female babies before they're born. Which clearly makes the hardest job in the animal kingdom that of Thrip Trauma Counselor. It wasn't you he was after, honey. It, it, it wasn't personal. Not feeling better, Doc. Not feeling better. Moving on to the simply strange. The female capelin fish cannot give birth alone. She requires two males to simultaneously body slam her, squirting the offspring out. So apparently humans did not invent the mosh pit. When they're ready for sex, Bermuda fireworms find the partner of their choice. 
then simultaneously explode and die. And you thought you had commitment issues. Flatworms are hermaphrodites and engage in something called penis fencing, where they dance and joust with another flatworm, trying to inseminate each other without being inseminated. Somebody turn that into a country song! <laughs> Which brings us to the yellow dung fly. After copulation, the male sits on the female to prevent other males from inseminating her. Not to be outdone, the male Zeus bug sits on a female's back all the time and eats a waxy substance secreted by her body which serves no purpose other than to feed him. If he's not getting enough to eat, he'll jump off her back and steal her food. Fortunately, as all the females present will assure you, male humans are nothing like male Zeus bugs. But of course, as everyone knows, females are sexually passive and shy, like the female lion-tailed macaque who rubs her genitals all over the male she has chosen. If he's slow to respond, she'll pull his hair, screech, and writhe on the ground until he gets to the getting. Or female ruffled lemurs, who simply give the male of their choice a good slapping until he gives up the goods. Female capuchins will choose a mate they desire, whining and whistling, yes, whistling, all the while. Once they catch them, if the male is still reticent, she gives him a good smacking. As for sexual appetite, sit down, men. Female woolly spider monkeys copulate with just about every male they meet, yet it's never non-discriminatory. The most choice male for any primate female is a total stranger. Even among primates where social relationships are of primary importance, females find strangers more appealing than any male they know. Knowing this, I feel it's Time to move again to a new town. Thank you very much.